Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this podcast, I sat down with Kelly Carrillo, who is the owner of Legacy Pool and Spa. She's also the president of the Sacramento City IPSA chapter. And in this podcast, we're going to talk about IPSA membership and the benefits. And she also recorded a second podcast with me where we discussed a little bit about being a pool gal in the industry. So if you've ever wondered about IPSA and membership and the benefits of it, this podcast is definitely for you. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open 7 days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's Referral Program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. So I'm talking to Kelly Carrillo, who is the owner and operator of Legacy Pool and Spa. How are you doing this morning, Kelly? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Um, you want to tell the listeners about your background? And I know that one of the things we're going to cover in this podcast is IPSA. And so that's part of your background, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, go over that for the listeners here. Okay. So I have owned my own business, uh, which is a maintenance and repair for three years in Sacramento, California. Um, I grew up in the industry. My dad's been doing it for 35 years and my mom did it for about 20 years. Um, I actually didn't want to do pools for a living. I was very, you know, anti that. And I went to college for psychology and, you know, got in debt with school and had a job that was decent. But the problem I had was... I couldn't really go to doctor's appointments and stuff like that for my kids or take them to school. So I was like, okay, I need to find something else. And I was able to jump into pools. Um, I have a separate business from my dad only because he, I felt since I was going to do weekly service is better to have a separate business because he's worked very hard at only doing repairs, installs, remodels, builds, stuff like that. Um, but he, I've been very fortunate to have him to help me when I need guidance so that I do things the right way instead of the wrong way. That is one of many things. Our family is pretty much full of independent business owners. You have my dad, you have my sister who, she has a pool service in Houston. My husband, he does stump grinding here in Sacramento called Stump Grinding King. His dad does it. So we're all a bunch of self-employed people who love it and would never go back. Yeah. So um, I guess the legacy pool and spa name kind of encapsulates all of that because of your background and your family background in the industry. Yes. And how many accounts do you have right now? So weekly service, I have 45, which I choose to do that many because I want to concentrate more on the installations, repairs, remodel aspect. Um, I do the weekly service as that steady money. Um, I do go as high as 60 in the summertime. Um, But again, I need to have room since I'm a one woman show to be able to do those repairs and stuff. So one of the reasons why we're having this discussion too is because of your association with IPSA and do you want to tell the listeners about IPSA and the basically what that is I know that it was founded in its current form in 1988 and a lot of people hear this when they go get their supplies they'll see the stickers um, but they will, won't really know exactly what IPSA is and what it stands for and um, what all that entails so you want to just give a brief um, description of IPSA and we'll go over some other aspects of that also. Yeah. So actually, IPSA is, I think, one of the best organizations for somebody in the pool industry, especially people who are newer in it. The reason is, is it's a great support system. Um, We we're there for each other. Um, Biggest thing is I can call somebody if I have a question and they'll help me out or I'll have a member who doesn't know how to do something but needs a referral for their customer uh, to get something fixed. 
and they'll call me and I'll I'll do the job. But while I'm there, I tell them, hey, I'll be there at this day and time. Why don't you come learn how to do it? So we have that great support system for each other. Um, and then we also have the education aspect. We, we push education really big. Um, we think that in order to really thrive in your business, education is key. You need to be able to have somebody to call when you, when you don't know something. Like I said before, you have the members, but because you go to these meetings and the reps are there, you know, teaching us things, you get to know the reps. So when you have a question in the field, you can call them. I've had many times where I, I can't figure out what's going on with all the knowledge I do have. And I'll just call my local rep and they'll talk me through every step. Um, Jandy and Hayward are the biggest ones that do that. Um, Pentair, they're not bad, but it's not as strong. Um, another great aspect is uh, what used to be called sick route. We like to call it now text for text is if you're sick or injured, um, you and you can't work, we will, in your chapter, will divide up your accounts and the members will take care of those pools. And what's nice about that is you then will not get, um, you won't lose the income because something happened that you didn't plan. Um, now, there are, every chapter has different limitations of how many pools they do. My chapter is a I believe our cap is 80. Um, you know, unfortunately, if somebody has 100, 120 pools. We can't cover them all, but at least they don't have to find somebody for those pools. Now, one thing that I know people are always concerned is, are these people qualified to take care of my pools? Are they going to be okay when we come back? Or am I going to lose this account because they're trying to get it from me? There are rules in place for that. So let's say you're concerned about the pool turning green and stuff like that. At least in my chapter, we're working on keeping communication open between the sick route chair who is in charge of implementing everything and the, the member taking care of it. So like if they have an issue that arises, we're like, hey, call us immediately so we can help you out to make sure that is what's going on. Um, also in IPSA, you have to pass a water certification test so that kind of gives that other extra oomph of, of um, support I guess or confidence that they're going to do well with the pool um, then when it comes to the encroaching on the pool members are not allowed to do that there are rules in place that make it so that if somebody steals your pool one there are repercussions with IPSA but like it's a, it's a big thing. You you get fined if they lose that customer. You can get up to a year of income from that member because they took the the customer, and then the member who took the customer will no longer be in IPSA. Yeah, so I, I like that the uh, safeguards that are built in there. I think a lot of the the questions you're gonna that you get about IPSA is you know the sick route coverage, and people are a little bit cautious for that reason. And I think you covered it well that. These safeguards are there to protect everyone involved in the in the group as far as, you know, the pool's not turning on them while they're sick. And then, of course, someone's stealing an account, which probably wouldn't happen with all these safeguards. No one would want to take that chance and kind of get a bad reputation for doing that. Um, on the other, other end of that is I get a lot of questions about IPSA, too, um, about the required meetings. And I know each chapter is different. And with the COVID thing, there may be some changes there. But... Uh, I know that my local one here required only once a month meeting. Um, and so how how is your chapter as far as meeting as a requirement? So what it is, is yes, we do have meetings almost every month, except for in our chapter, July and December, we do not. We call those blacked out months because July, everyone's super busy and December is family time. And so every other month has a, has a meeting when we well, let me get back to the requirement. The requirement is you have to show up to one meeting a quarter. So one meeting every three months. And so if you really space it out, you can go to meetings almost during months that you aren't as busy. Every, I would also say if you have multiple 
chapters in your area and you find that one time slot it doesn't work for you let's say like my chapter we have the fourth wednesday at seven o'clock of the month you can look at maybe another chapter and see when their meetings are because they all are on different days that helps out there in my chapter it works out that if you only really have to show up twice a year because we have july and december blacked out um, and you can do those in the winter now with covid I do think it's a little bit more convenient for members because they don't have to leave their house. We have in my chapter, and I know a lot of other chapters in IPSA have been using Zoom for their meetings. So they're still able to attend and meet that requirement. And the meetings, you know, are not a bad thing either because there's education that goes on there and you also meet the other members. And like you mentioned earlier, there's a network in your chapter and so it's a good idea to go to these meetings because of the networking aspect of it and the educational aspect, correct? Correct. So in my chapter, I work very hard at trying to get quality speakers, speakers that people would actually like to listen to. So we always, you know, have the the big three, as they call them, Hayward, Jandy, and Pantera do their, their you know, updates or, um, you know, any particular equipment. Sometimes they'll do a, if, like we had one meeting with Hayward where they taught us how to do an Omni Logic controller, how to wire it and everything. I had where when we started having the shortage really hit, I had Alpha West come and talk about um, alternatives to using tabs or chlorine, which I thought was a great thing. Um, sometimes I even think out of the box, you know, let's have an esthetician come and talk about skin care during the season all seasons actually so that we can try to prevent any cancer things happening because they are very knowledgeable as well meetings i'm telling you i know it sounds like oh my god i have to show up to this meeting it's a waste of time but if you have a chapter that gives you good meetings you're going to learn a lot you're going to learn what the top of the line stuff is you're going to meet those people that are going to help you help you not just in how to install it, but maybe you have a pool that you're not sure of how big of a pump or which pump to put in. They'll help you with that too. So you got the networking, you got the education. Again, with the whole sick route, hey, you come to the meetings, you get to meet the people so then you feel more confident in their skills when they take care of your route. Is there a price breakdown or is there something on the on the website where it shows how much it costs every month to be a member? So it, it varies per chapter. Honestly, as Ipsa puts it, it's kind of like a couple cof coffees a month. Um, I know for my particular chapter, it's only um, twenty three seventy five a month. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's that's for all those benefits that you get from that. That's that's a really good rate. And so maybe you know, let's just say two hundred, a little over two hundred a year, and you get that yeah. added insurance. So for the single polar that doesn't have employees, doesn't have relatives that can cover their route. I think it's a, you know, it would be an ideal insurance policy because one of the big worries about being an individual owner, a uh, single polar, is that if I break my ankle or if I get, you know, got, you know, God forbid, if you get COVID-19 and you're out for the quarantine period and you're 14 days or whatever, um, how, how are my pools going to survive this? Um, and I think that's that's one of the benefits of IPSA that I think should be in the forefront, you know, in the promotions of the fact that this is an organization that's going to help you to keep your business operating because you can't miss two weeks of your service. It's impossible and, and survive in the business. Now, there is um, a minimum and it's going to depend on every chapter. For ours, I, it's about you have to have a minimum two weeks that you're out. It can't mm -hmm. be like one or one week. But let's say you have COVID. I think that if you were to talk to the guys, there could be people if IPSA is not the IPSA chapter isn't going to do it as a chapter. There's going to be other guys that are going to, or girls, that will be like, hey, I'll help you out. And then also, you aren't paying them like you would pay an employee to cover your, your route. Um, you are going to, we're, they're not allowed to charge you except for chemicals at what it, the cost is. So here in, I'm paying a little over, the, what is it, like 324 I'm paying per gallon you get charged 324. But what's kind of nice is not all members do that. They a lot of them are just like, hey, no problem. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. But that but that could be a possibility. I don't want to not have anybody think that'll never 
happen if they bought it. Um, yeah. I use the tech for tech insurance, as I would like to say, for maternity leave when I had my son two years ago. I would have lost my business during that. What what is that insurance? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Oh, it's called. Well, it's uh, the tech for tech. Uh, the, that's the term that we now call step out. So you, so let's say you are a woman in the industry who wants to have a family. Being part of IPSA, you, you have kind of that maternity leave, even though you're in an uh, independent business. The standard things, um, sick, injured, death are covered. Mm-hmm. If you have anything outside of that, I would just talk to your chapter and see what could be an option. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a each chapter is kind of like a family. Um, you know, we have chapters who do a big, huge camp out every year, and we have a chapter that does trap shooting every year. So you get to know each other like a family, and usually you want to help out as much as you can. Yeah, and I think I always encourage everyone in the industry to be part of some group. I have my online group, of course, which is not the same thing as meeting in person, but I think being a part of a group is crucial in the industry because you're out there basically by yourself in a lot of cases. And having, like you have with IPSA, having the backup of the group behind you um, is a crucial thing in anything, any kind of thing. I mean, your background in um, psychology was your major, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you know that groups are super important for every aspect, not just the business, but for personal and, you know, church groups, things like that are are really important to, to lift you up and to encourage you. And I think this is just an extension of that kind of psychology. Yes, and so, you know, there's a lot of good benefits there. There's also a discount on, I know IPSA uses Aero Insurance. Is that what they use still? Yes. So we still use Aero. So um, another thing about IPSA is you do have to have insurance to be a member, but it doesn't have to be our insurance. I would say, though, for the single polar, the insurance we offer is the best for them. They're, you know, you get plenty of co- liability coverage. There's a life insurance policy. There's an insurance Uh, It's like a medical insurance, but what it is, is if you get hurt on the job and your insurance doesn't cover everything, it will then subsidize the rest. And it's actually pretty affordable compared when I shopped around for others that was equal in the liability. I was going to be paying, you know, a little bit more. Um, But looking at it as a, a whole, the membership and the insurance, it's quite affordable. Yeah, I think, like I said, there's a lot of great benefits. With IPSA, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people are a little hesitant or not really sure about what um, IPSA entails, because there's a lot of other different groups out there and associations. And um, IPSA, I think clearly you have a lot of the the speakers at your at your meetings are members themselves, like Hayward um, and other other ones. I think Pool RX, things like that are all members of IPSA, and those are the ones that do all the speaking at the meeting. Is that correct? Yes. So they get so supporter. So there's actually two levels. So there's members who associate members who are for IPSA national and they support us. And then you actually have IPSA chapter supporters, which a lot of them are the ones who are already supporting IPSA national. But then you get your local supply houses that may not be the big ones. You get other little, you know, the local um, plaster companies stuff like that. So they come and they talk um, and then they show, even if they're not speaking, the reps show up and they're there. So you can talk to them at any time before, during, or after the meeting. And you also have a, a newsletter that's almost like a magazine that you publish also, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's the Ipsy and it comes out once a month and there's various articles on things. They do spotlights on members, on chapters. They do articles on things going on in the industry that we need to be educated on or big you know, news stuff. It's it's actually really nice and I enjoy reading it every month. There's also coupons in there from the manufacturers. Um, and uh, then on the very back page of, of it, you have all of IPSA national supporters and their phone numbers. So let's say you need to get a hold of somebody, you can call their phone number and they can help you find who's for your area. And I think also, <laughs> just uh, I think also at a, at a marketing standpoint, having the IPSA sticker on your truck that it gives you a more professional look because you are part of a group, an association, just like the plumbers and electricians have their associations. I think the groups give us some clout too, as far as marketing to new customers or existing customers. Yes. And then also um, what's nice is online, 
like I'll give an example to explain it. I Googled myself just to see what comes up, like my business name. And one of the top five things I saw was actually my name coming from Ipsa's website. They have all their members listed and you can tailor the profile and it will come up when people are looking for pool service. And also, I think there's some manufacturers that offer discounts through Ipsa. They have the coupons yes. like you mentioned. So, And then the- Ipsa does have other discounts as well that you are made available like on education. And um, there is also a, I'm going to look it up. There's a pool software that is available at a discount rate that they're offering. And these are, we're going to constantly have exclusive deals for our members. Now, we actually just launched a app yesterday. And all the members go to the app and then they can see the different type of deals that are available. So Pool Track is one that has a discount for IPSA members. And then Educational Leverage is another that's giving discounts for courses for IPSA members. Yeah, so I, I guess after hearing all these benefits of the group and then the requirements aren't, you know, that debilitating. I, I guess that word is probably not the right word to use. It's and not as bad as some people think. <laughs> You have the sick route coverage, and occasionally you have to do extra pools for somebody because you're part of that that coverage. And then you have the required meetings, which to me I think would be great just to get the education and, and kind of um, get that fellowship of other pool service professionals. And it's pretty much a win-win. There's really no reason why you should not join IPSA if there's a local chapter in your area. Yes, definitely. I I I'm the type that I was taught if you're in pools, you join IPSA. That's just what you do. But the longer I've been an actual member, the more I see how this is going to benefit everybody. And the way I look at it is you're going to get the correct training that you need in order to succeed in your area. You know, manufacturers can give all the training they want on technical stuff, but it's kind of nice to get that local knowledge of how things are done, what works, what doesn't work, all that. Yeah, again, I think, you know, you, you summed it up nicely. There's there's really not much to add. It's just go online and find your local IPSA chapter, IPSA website. Yeah, so they can actually, there's two ways. Um, you can just go to IPSA.com and there is information on why to join IPSA um, and then also how to join IPSA in the local chapters. Or uh, they can download the IPSA app, which is available in Apple Store and the Google Play Store. And that they open it up and it will, they just click like general information website. That way you, you can just do it really quickly mm-hmm. and a lot more convenient for me when I show it to potential members, because you know we're all busy when we first meet each other. If I tell you download an app, you download the app and then you see it later, you can explore. Well, oh, I appreciate your time on Ipsa and I, you're going to stick around and we're going to um, talk a little bit more about you being um, a female in the pool industry also in the next in the next recording. Um, but thank you yeah. for going over IPSA for the listeners here. Yeah, no problem. So I'm a big proponent of joining some kind of group, industry group, if you can. I have an online group with 250 members. You can learn more about my group at poolguycoaching.com. But if you're looking for a local group to connect with, IPSA would be a great choice for you. And of course, there's no problem with joining more than one group. I have a lot of my members that are part of my coaching group that are part of other groups, including IPSA. And so it works out really well. You have the most support you can get by joining as many groups as you can join. And again, if you're interested in membership in IPSA, you can learn more at www.ipssa.com. That's ipssa.com. And then you can find out the information to join your local IPSA chapter. And if you're looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can go to my website, swimmingpoorlearning.com, and on the banner, click on the podcast icon, and this will take you to previous episodes I recorded. And also on that banner, you can see the Pool Guy Coaching site, and this is where you would join my group also if you're interested in joining my online coaching group. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy, and solutions and expertise to do it right.